See how Crystal Wolf and MySpace turned $5,000 into $580 million. And all of a sudden, you become the thing that big media companies want to buy. Uh -huh. You and your partner and others sell it to Rupert Murdoch and News Corp. More on the deal that made DeWolf rich. That's next on Conversations. Mr. Wolf is the founder and leader and runner of MySpace. And MySpace is the new world. He is another force in changing the way everything happens. Whether it's communicating with your neighbor, meeting a stranger, expressing yourself online. It takes more than vision for starting something like MySpace. It takes hard work. It takes fiscal acumen. It takes a new and good idea. It takes basic instincts. And it takes capital. And he obviously had them all. I did a show called Prom Queen that had a 12-hour head start on MySpace. And millions and millions of people saw it there. Right now, he is the guy. And he sold his company to Rupert Murdoch for a fortune. But you have to remember, he's an entrepreneur. You could wake up one day, you would have a whole new idea. So, Chris, <laughs> MySpace is the definitive new thing that seems like it's been around forever. Dominant new portal uh, in the world. And all in, what, two years? Three yeah, years? Yeah, about three and a half years. How many per day? How many people per day come on this social networking portal? Yeah, so we have almost 200 million people signed up worldwide. So it's really become... That's double the year last year. Yeah. Double yeah. in a year? Yeah, pretty much. And it's, wow. um, it's uh, really become the first worldwide community that's out there. But we're adding about 300,000 new people a day. So in terms of the number of actual pages viewed on MySpace, it's the number one ranked site in the United States in terms of pages viewed, so in terms of hits and traffic. So it really has become a phenomenon. Once people get on the site, they stay on for quite a long time. And change things like the music business. Uh, in my era, my era, four years ago, not even my era, you'd break records through radio. Now even music is being broken through MySpace. Bands want to be on MySpace. Right. Yeah, I mean, obviously the music business has changed a lot with CD sales dropping by 20% a year and they're recapturing some of those revenues through digital sales, but it's very difficult for them to spend a lot of money in signing new bands. So the great thing for these new bands coming up is that it's really cheap to buy software, you know, an inexpensive computer. You can create a pretty high quality CD. And then now you have a great promotional pr platform like MySpace where you can reach people around the world. The site MySpace, you just bought that for five dollars or whatever you pay yeah a year before you ever launched or two years just because you like the name with no sense of exactly what it would be yeah it was um it was just sort of on a fluke it seemed like a good deal i think it was five thousand dollars good Some name. company that was going bankrupt was selling it <clears throat> decided to buy it came up with the idea for myspace and we're just scratching our heads for what a good name could be and we came up with all these crazy names that were you know really ridiculous like commingle and and then it was just sort of this moment Oh yeah, we bought the URL MySpace a year ago. Let's use that. Do you think we're getting close to a bubble? Or you don't think there's I, that kind of bubble? Left? I do. I think it's a little bit of a different bubble, though. Um, the last bubble wasn't really built on anything um, that was solid. Meaning, there's a real re uh, internet advertising revenue generation play here that that wasn't existent before. So. Any site before that had some goofy new feature would get funded and be worth hundreds of millions of dollars and even go public. Now, at least, um, the really solid companies like a MySpace, um, you know, there's a big revenue opportunity with it in terms of selling advertising. So how about Facebook? Because they're getting a lot of, they're the new game in town now, but they're not new either. And they're growing fast. They're not, they're a third the size of you, I think, or less. Yeah. But are they a real threat to your strategy? I think there's sort of three levels of competition for us. You know, everyone, all the big portals saw how much success we were getting. So they st all began to start social services, whether it was a photo sharing service or social networking, video, you know, whatever it may be. You know, then you have the media companies trying to do the same thing. And then you have the more niche social networking sites that are right. getting less niche, like, like a Facebook. And certainly in, in the United States, um, they're probably our nearest competitor and then in other countries, you know, there's a lot of other competitors. Well, you're in six, you have your own MySpace in 16 different countries? Yeah, right? I think it's 18 now. So it's a big, big priority for us to put our flag be there in first. every country, be there first. And we haven't always been there first, but um, 
we're number one in, in quite a few of them already. So mostly people are meeting friends, talking to friends, hearing new music, but you're moving into content. You have a, a Mark Burnett political show you're putting on soon? Yeah. All that with Mark? Yeah, with Mark. Um, so we're also doing a town hall with all the major candidates. Um, where and they all have sites already, right? Yeah, yeah. They all have um, MySpace pages, and they're all getting really big. And they're Even all brands viral. have sites, right? Yeah, yeah. Which is a way that eventually there'll be more monetization inside MySpace, where a brand becomes uh, uh, part of an affiliation to the consumer more than just a 30-second spot. Yeah, definitely. And th that's one of the things that brands have been so desperate to figure out. How do you connect with your audience um, in a more interactive way? Um, how do you get away from the billboard, the 30-second ad? And what we've done is we've pioneered a new kind of advertising where, that we call custom communities, where a brand actually sets up a community within MySpace, and the users interact with that brand you know, just as they would with one of their friends. So the brands that they affiliate themselves with are actually very important to socializing. And all of a sudden, you become the thing that big media companies want to buy. Uh -huh. And you and your partner and others sell it to Rupert Murdoch and News Corp. Were you enthusiastic about that? Or did you say, wait a second, our little Santa Monica group that has exploded is going to be dominated by, you know, the Wall Street Journal's thinking about this today, so it's a good time, <laughs> it's a good time to... To question you on what were your thoughts before and what are your thoughts after, and of course you'll be politic, but yeah. well, I think yeah, I think it's actually um, a, a great case study. I mean, we've certainly had our growing pains in the initial days. We always did see ourselves being part of a bigger media company. The interesting thing about News Corp is, in a lot of ways, it's very entrepreneurial. It started out from extremely entrepreneurial roots. I believe it was a small community newspaper in Adelaide, Australia that was almost bankrupt and you know, it grew into this whatever $80 billion you know, company. So you know, from that standpoint, um, it seemed that there was definitely an aspect of entrepreneurialism that was valued within the organization. Yeah, but you were no longer the sole boss. The really key thing is we put a lot of uh, trust both in, in Peter Chern and, and Rupert Murdoch when we sold the company. You know, we looked at them and they said, look, we're not going to monkey around with the product. We're not going to mess with something that's you know clearly the fastest growing website of all time. Um, the internet is a relatively new business for us. Um, we realize that. And this is a new organization that we're starting. We want you guys to be the cornerstone of this new business. And well, so they we, we also just have believe a lot of assets and and economic support they can give you and all that. Yeah. And Rupert's wife, Wendy, who is helping you get into China. Yeah, I mean um, Rupert's and Peter and everyone are very definitely engaged in, in, um, in growing our business very quickly. We think we should be in you know, 40 countries by the end of the year, and it should be the dominant global network.